Hello everyone, welcome to CH4521 Organic 2 Lab. This is the Fisher Esterification Experiment video. All right, first up what we're gonna see, um, you can see here circled a uh, amount of moles and density for our two reagents. You're gonna need to calculate the milliliter, the volume that you see in these graduated cylinders for both the isoamyl and our acetic acid reactants. Um, and so not really showing you the volume here, but just kind of showing you the TA going through and uh, measuring them out and pouring them in a round bottom flask. All right, now also we are going to be adding, or you see they're adding 0.8 milliliters so less than one mil one mil uh, 0.8 milliliters of sulfuric acid all right they're being added right now all right so having both our um, both of our reagents mixed together with the sulfuric acid this can now be refluxed um, so you're going to see the round bottom flask is going to be connected to that condenser that's on the ring stand And also note the solution color is very translucent. Okay, it's almost perfectly clear. Um, and then by the end of the 60 minute mark, which I will cue you in a second to let you know, but um, by the end of the 60 minute mark, you will notice a huge difference. All right, so being stirred and heated via reflux. All right, pay attention to that round bottom flask. It's going to be very sharp because we're going to cut over to the end of the 60 minutes. You're not going to actually watch this thing reflux for 60 minutes. Whoop, look at that. Uh, I think a reaction happened, right? A color change is definitely evidence that a, <laughs> that a reaction took place here. All right, so we have this nice vibrant uh, dark red brownish color. All right, so now it will... Uh, be allowed to cool to room temperature so that we can begin all of our uh, steps uh, using the separatory funnel. All right, first up, once it is allowed to cool to room temperature, um, this uh, this reaction product mixture will be allowed to uh, will be poured into a separatory funnel, which there's the stopper for it on the bench top. Oh, and there they put it in the ring stand. All right, and pouring it into the separatory funnel now. There it goes. All right. All right, so first up, adding eight milliliters of ice water. All right, and then also going to rinse the round bottom flask. All right, also adding 10 milliliters of diethyl ether. All right, so shaken, not stirred. All right. All right, now we'll be allowed to separate. And so you can kind of sort of see the separation taking place here. Um, you have that bottom layer that's a little clearer. The top layer is a little dingier looking dingy that's a scientific term all right letting out the uh, bottom layer which is the aqueous layer all right now adding 10 milliliters of water again all right mixed and uh mixed it and allowed it to settle so yet again our bottom layer here is going to be the aqueous layer so letting that out so this yellowish tinted colored solution that's our diethyl ether that's got our uh, product in it and or any reactants that didn't make it into the water. All right, so now I'm going to add um, <coughs> oh, adding sodium carbonate by carbonate. All right, 
and uh, just to know when that was added it was allowed to uh, react and allow any CO2 that was generated in the reaction okay if you don't know look look and see what sodium carbonate reacts with okay is it basic is it acidic what is it and so then you can kinda tell what's gonna happen there what it was reacting with alright now adding uh, a second portion of sodium carbonate can't really tell I don't see any but um, just to be safe I didn't see any generation of bubbles on that one alright gonna allow that to settle then gonna kick out our bottom aqueous layer again Alright, now they're adding saturated sodium chloride, um, and so your manual may say brine, right? Brine solution is a saturated sodium chloride solution, so it's just the maximum amount of sodium chloride we can dissolve in water. Alright, letting out that bottom aqueous layer again, our sodium chloride layer. Alright, now transferring what should be our clean product mixture in diethyl ether into a uh, Erlenmeyer flask. Now going to add drying agent to it. Alright, in this case, uh, the drying agent used was uh, sodium sulfate. Alright, and so it's just going to absorb any of the water, allowing it to sit. All right, after it's been allowed to sit for a while, I'm going to transfer this now dry solution to a large round bottom flask that can be attached to our rotovap so that we can remove off the ether. And uh, what we should be left with is just our product. And in this case, our uh, ester product is going to be uh, a liquid, so uh, we'll see a liquid remain, not a solid. All right, not really seeing what's going on, but you know that water, that water bath is hot. Okay, it's also hooked up to a pump, so that uh, we can get that ether off as effectively as possible. All right. All right, now um, with the ester product that we had left, they're going to acquire IR spectra. Now you're going to be shown a brief clip of the IR. But don't worry, there is a PDF that is uploaded as well for you. Okay, now remember this is an ester, right, that was made from acetic acid, right, which contains carboxylic acid. All right, so remember carboxylic acid has an OH. Okay, but it was also uh, with an alcohol. Alcohol also has an OH. So what's the big thing here? If you were successful in this reaction and in all your separation and purification with the rotovap, uh, you should not see any OH stretching in the IR. All right, and so you need to evaluate that IR to tell you was this successful. Okay, and think there should be two peaks you're looking for to identify that you have an ester. Okay, so there's the uh, there's the IR for your product. Uh, on the screen there's going to be a, a printout that we're going to see on the screen as well and then they're also going to show you uh, the mass of this product all right so looking 4.2 uh, grams that is our final product mass all right and I don't know if you noticed it but that is the product that's not just the that's not the product and the round bottom flask they already zeroed out or teared the flask so 4.2 grams that's your final product mass and there it is all right and you'll get a print you have a printout available for this in your canvas for your IR good luck